uh, as a potentially comparable technology, uh, but non-blockchain, so a decentralized internet, do you have any thoughts about MadeSafe and the Safe Network? You know, I think, uh, so for those of you who don't know, MadeSafe is a system that's designed to create peer-to-peer uh, -peer cloud computing. Uh, the idea being that resources that you have on your computer, disk, computing, networking capabilities, can be shared. And while sharing is something that we may be naturally inclined to do, there are quite a few barriers. And the idea being that if you create a system of incentives in the form of a currency for sharing disk space on your laptop or computing or other resources, then we will encourage more sharing. And the interesting thing is that you don't encourage sharing because people profit from it, but because the ability for me to share disk and earn currency then gives me the ability to buy disk computing and networking resources from others in a way that creates the sharing economy. Um, I think some of the first applications we're going to see um, are going to be related to personal computing and personal clouds. So I think it's a very interesting experiment. I have no idea if it will work. Um, and I certainly don't advise in treating Bitcoin or any of the other uh, systems that are evolving around them as speculative investments unless you really know what you're doing because we are so early stage in this technology that the one characteristic we all share across the entire industry is crazy volatility right and so if you treat it as an investment you'd better have very great courage or a lot of money you know as they say what's the best way to uh, turn what's the best way to gain one million dollars Start with two million dollars and trade like crazy. <laughs> and that's how speculative investment works. So yes, very interested in the technology, very interested in the projects. We'll see how it goes. Yes. Thank you, Andreas, for coming over. And I really like your speech and, and all your conference that you do. I really would like to ask about uh, the power of mining centralization in, let's say, a couple of countries. What do you think? And although Bitcoin looks like anti-fragile, uh, how do you foresee that we are going to pass or go through that mining centralization power? That's a very, very good question. So for those of you who are technically minded or have been following the Bitcoin space, one of the characteristics of Bitcoin from the first white paper by Satoshi Nakamoto was the idea that Bitcoin decentralizes power by giving one CPU one vote. The idea being that by contributing processing power to the network, you become part of the decision-making process. Something interesting happened though because the incentives once it started taking off were so powerful that people started investing in more complicated computing and soon it wasn't CPUs but GPUs graphical processing units that were used to mine Bitcoin and that represented a 100 times improvement in the ability to mine. Think of it as one GPU a hundred votes. <laughs> Um, and very soon from GPUs we went to FPGAs, field programmable gate arrays, which are systems of silicone where you can encode an algorithm and run it really fast. And then we went to ASICs, application specific integrated circuits, which are basically mining chips designed to do nothing but mining. In each one of these steps, we saw somewhere between a hundred and ten thousand fold increase in performance over the previous generation. And that is the primary reason why it caused enormous centralization in mining. However, that game is now over. If you were a miner who migrated to ASICs, then migrating to a system that was printed um, with a silicon fabrication system at 24 nanometers gave you an advantage of 10,000 times over the previous generation. And you could buy those chips by making a very big order with a semiconductor factory, which means that only very few could put up the necessary capital. And if you could then take that down to 22 nanometers using a more specialized silicon fabrication system, you could get another massive improvement. So we saw mining hardware evolving every three to six months. Literally, if you set up 
a warehouse full of mining equipment, it had a shelf life of less than six months. In six months, it went from the most powerful, most profitable system of mining to being unprofitable for the level of electricity it consumed. And so that created even more centralization because now the ability to put down more capital every three to six months to get rapid delivery to be closely connected to silicon fabrication, centralized mining. And it centralized mining a lot in China, primarily because that's where the silicon fabrication is. And there's also some great opportunities for cheap energy. I don't think that was the vision of Satoshi.